Hey, what's going on guys? Daniel from Modbot here, and I am in front of the camera, which I have not been and am not as much as I would like to be anymore, due to the fact that it is always really loud here, uh, between the kids and the animals. My Delilah, who's laying here on the ground, hi. Um, but they're out of the house for the night, so I figured, no excuse, I can be loud, I can talk, I can yell if I want to, uh, but I need to pick up one of the lavalier style microphones, um, I just googled the name of it, I was recording this a second ago, and I couldn't remember what they were called, but basically just one of those little clip-on microphones for your shirt, so that way it only picks up audio really close to my mouth. And I had one at one point, and I lost it, and I have not gotten another one since, I really need to, so that is on top of my list of priorities. In this video, we are not here to talk about microphones and stuff like that, we are going to take a look at a massive print, so let's take a look at it. This guy right here is what we are here to look at, and... This is the biggest print I've printed in one piece. Um, I mean, the biggest thing I ever printed was the arcade cabinet, but that was in three parts. This is a single print. It's uh, pretty close to being 305 by 305 by 320 uh, build height, and I printed this as a test print on my JG Aurora 3D printer. And I will show you guys close-ups of it in a second here, along with the time lapse, along with taking a look at the model and all that good stuff. Uh, but I briefly want to talk about it. I printed it in all white PLA, um, again on the JG Aurora 3D printer, which I just got in. It was a total of, the slicer said 45 hours. It ended up being roughly, my dog. <laughs> I said there's no sound and then the dog's making sound, but it ended up being roughly 50 hours. Um, so yeah, that was insane um, because I decided to time lapse the whole thing over the course of two days, and my bed's here, the printer's there, so I had light on for two days, bright light, camera shutter going, and the printer going, and it was very tough to sleep, I didn't sleep as good for two days, but it was a small sacrifice for hopefully a pretty cool time ups, you guys let me know. Um, but yeah, I figured this was a really cool model to test out the height of the JJ Aurora and see how well it would print, and I'm just blown away by the quality of this print, it turned out phenomenal. Um, is actually going to be a gift. It's my mom's birthday in about four hours from right now. So it's a gift for my mom and I'm actually going to, I didn't get a chance today, but tomorrow I will be masking off the stairs and the tower um, and I'm gonna be painting, spray painting the rocks and the top of this uh, dark gray. So it'll have a really nice contrast and um, it, re it, re it recommended it on the model where it had a um, kind of suggestion in the instructions that you could throw a tea light candle in it. Although this is scaled up 300 times bigger than what the original model comes in, but I got these little LED tea light candles from the store and let me throw this in here so you guys can see it. Of course it's not standing up right. Okay, I'm going to kill the lights really quick here so that way you guys can actually see hopefully how awesome it looks. And it'll look even cooler with the rocks being really dark, but so you guys can see it. But it looks freaking awesome. Um, I'm like super hyped to give this to my mom because I know she's going to freak out. It turned out way better than I expected. I was super nervous to have such a long print going. Let's turn the light, lights back on really quick here. But yeah, I was extremely nervous because uh, due to the, its extent of time, I knew that if it failed, I wouldn't have a chance to print a second one before her birthday. <clears throat> but yeah, it turned out phenomenally. The feature that I used, because originally I was trying to use up little spools of plastic, this ended up being, this is about a full spool of plastic, it was a kilogram of, it, it was a kilogram of plastic, like exactly. But originally I was using little bits of white spools of PLA that I had, um, and it was really cool, the change filament feature of this thing is awesome. It's got a run out sensor, so when it runs out it'll pause the print, but I ended up, uh, the couple times I saw it getting low before I went to bed because I didn't want to hear the filament run out alarm, hit change um, filament and the nozzle pauses, lifts up, goes off to the side and then you click out, it spits the filament out, put a new spool in or a new plastic in, click in, it then extrudes it, spits the plastic out and then I just pulled off the little excess on the nozzle click resume and then it drops back over to where it was and continues. But I only did that twice because once it started getting to like the bottom of the rocks of the big area, I noticed that some of my white PLA spools were different, although they were still all white. I didn't want to have like some substantially different looking white. Although it wouldn't have mattered that much because I'm painting a lot of it, but regardless, I ended up just throwing on a brand new spool and finishing it off with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a close-up shot of this, but I'm super excited. I won't have a 
uh, shot of it when it's all painted in here, but I'll post that over on either Twitter or Instagram, so if you guys follow me on there, um, you'll be able to see it. If not, there are links down in the description. Or 3D Print Love is back online, which is super exciting, so I'll definitely go ahead and post it on there. But let's get a close-up shot of this, that way you guys can see all of the details on this. So here's a close-up of it. My biggest concern with this print was actually going to be layer shifting as the Z-axis went to the higher uppermost parts of the lighthouse, which there was absolutely none of. The only things I noticed at all were on some of the rocks there was stringing, which um, could be things that were retraction settings in the slicer that I needed to work on, or it could have helped if I potentially added a better fan shroud to the actual 3D printer. But overall, it just turned out immaculate. I couldn't have asked for a better print. I ended up printing it at 0.3 layer height to cut back on time. I would have loved to have printed it at a uh, lower resolution, like 0.2 or even 0.1, but at 0.2, it was looking like 60 hours to 65 hours, and uh, it already went from 40 hours to nearly 50, so I would imagine it would have taken like 80 hours or something like that. And I did print it at a relatively slow speed as well, just because I hadn't used this printer before, and I don't know what it's capable of shooting out, and I didn't want to sacrifice quality too much. But here's the file, it's the Forbidden Watchtower, which I found on Thingiverse, an amazing model. I'll link you guys to the description. I'll link you guys to the model in the description, excuse me, along with to the printer if you want to find out more, purchase one for yourself. But here you can see my slicer or uh, Cura settings. And I did have to use supports on the cap part of this, but there's a few different models that the developer of the uh, 3D file created. So you can print it in one part with the roof on it already and you wouldn't need supports if you did that. I opted to not do that again because I wanted to be able to throw that tea light candle inside of it. So depending on what you want to do with it, you wouldn't necessarily have to print it in two parts. But here is the time lapse, which again is shrunken down to two minutes for you guys, but it was you know, over like two days shrunken down to two minutes for you guys. So hope you guys enjoy the time lapse for those of you. I, I personally love watching time lapses of 3D prints because it's really cool to see them form. And obviously watching for 48 hours is un unrealistic. You get bored out of your mind. So if you guys have any questions or further concerns for me, let me know in the comments down below. And I will be having a review of the JG Aurora coming up. I do need to do a review on the TiVo Tarantula before I do that, so expect one on the TiVo Tarantula prior to the JG Aurora. But so far, after this print, I am just astounded with the quality you're able to get. And again, this printer retails roughly at 500, but on Gearbest, and again in the link I'll provide, it was at 375 last time I looked. And for something that's ready to rock and roll out of the box and the quality I got, um, so far I really don't have much if anything to say negative about this printer so hope you guys are all doing fantastic and i am very much looking forward to making some more videos for you guys and on that note i will end the video and let the time lapse play out for those of you that would like to watch it thank you for watching and i will see you guys next time peace guys